to structure everything back to the drawing board, and what a great opening weekend for them. A little up and down, up and down, but back to the drawing board. Well, I fully expect the Wahine to build on this weekend and be better. And the thing I'm going to really pay attention to, particularly Thursday, is their serving. As you heard, Dave, I didn't even get the question out. He knew what I was asking. Uh, we all know that's one aspect they definitely need to improve in, and we'll see if that happens this weekend coming up. And, and again, serving is a, a little more difficult thing to coach because you can perform one way in practice, but once you're out here in the stature of center and when the pressure is on, uh, then it becomes a little bit more challenging. So as a coach, whenever you're trying to teach a player how to serve, you always have to add consequences to it to just kind of add that pressure of that game time situation because it's, it's very difficult to coach serving uh, because when you don't have the pressure, a lot of times you can just free it up and you're serving bombs. But uh, it, it's one of those difficult things to coach. Maybe serve underhand. You know, yeah, like not at would, this level. No, you don't think so? No, it's not no. going to work? Just keep <laughs> the ball level. in. <laughs> Just get it in. All righty. Well, that'll wrap things up. Don't forget, we'll be on with Game On 7 o'clock Thursday night as Y takes on the Mexico first serve uh, about 7.30. Thank you so much. We really appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, take your sporting passion to the next level online at OCSports.tv and on Oceanic Time Warner Cable with OC Sports and Pants. Be a fan and thank you for making University of Hawaii Sports your passion for our entire OC Sports crew. From Lisa, for Ryan, I'm Scott. Until next Thursday night, we bid you aloha and a good evening from the Stan Sheriff Center in Manoa. Before taking their field for its season opener against 25th ranked Washington, before these young men really began buying into the power of belief, and before a 16-point home dog began to take it to a brand name team from a brand name conference, a message began traveling from player to player. Not tonight, not this time, not in our house. That looked good. Rainbow Warriors came real close to pulling off an upset of the Huskies. Came real close to shocking the college football world. Came real close to making believers of Aloha Stadium faithful. But when the final whistle blew, Hawaii came up short again by one. One. Exiting Halava Valley with another Hawaii heartbreak. Anytime you lose, you know, it's, it's a disappointment. You know, no, no one, you know, walks this earth to be a loser. You know, you want to be a winner. So obviously it's a disappointment, but it definitely shows, you know, that our team, that we have, you know, the confidence to get it done. And, uh, you know, it's just little things that we need to work on. Like Coach been preaching, you know, little things is everything. So just got to, you know, like I said, go back on the film, get better, and then just, you know, focus on Oregon State. We beat ourselves those, you know, we have a mental mistake by, you know, playing against a a ranked team, you know, get us so hyped up, motive, uh, you know, get our good passion, a lot of energy in our team, you know, we just got to work on our little stuff. There's no more victories, but uh, and the, kids are, the kids are a little bit angry, and you're going to see a, a, a tough team next week. Now, numbers tell a much different story than the final score. UH offense took 97 snaps, 55 in the first half, outgaining UW 424 yards to 336. 
defense. Surrendered just 162 passing yards, 91 yards on one play. In fact, Washington quarterback Jeff Lindquist just three for 15 passing in the second half, just 28 yards. The defense forced three and outs on four of the five Husky possessions in the third quarter alone. We've been getting a lot of moral victories, but at the end of the day, you know, in a win-loss column, you know, it's a, it's a zero in the wins and it's a one, you know, it's a loss in the, uh, in the, in the loss column. So, you know, it doesn't matter if we, if we lost by 50 or if we lost by, you know, one point, you know, a loss is a loss. So that's something that, you know, we definitely need to work on. Oh, uh, we did all right. We, um, they broke some runs here and there. If we did a little bit more pressure on the quarterback, it would have helped out the DBs a little bit more. But up front, it, w it wasn't great. Uh, we want to be great. Uh, it was, a, it was an all right night. Close, but officially another loss. Washington edging out Hawaii by a final score of 17 to 16. Now there were possibilities from the opening kickoff. St. Just to the goal line. He has a seam across the 30. St. Just out to the 42. The awesome St. Just with our super cuts, cuts that rock. How about Ikeko Wolsey? Joey Iosefa, offensive line, defensive line, Taz Stevenson, Simon Poti, zero turnovers. We got a lot to talk about. I'm Robert Kekaula. This is Norm Chow, Inside Access here in OC Sports. I want to welcome UH head football coach Norm Chow. Including the wins since you've been head coach here at UH, I want to see if you agree. Hawaii versus Washington, August 30th, 2014. Best game of this football program since you've been the head coach, despite the outcome. Well, I thought it was a tremendous effort, Robert. Um, these young men really, really focused in and, and, and gave us everything they have. The, the concern is when you play a good team like this, you cannot afford mistakes. And we made five. Well, we made probably about eight mistakes in the course of the game that we, you just cannot do. But the effort, like you say, uh, it, we couldn't ask for anything better than that. Physically, line of scrimmage, mm -hmm. offensive line, defensive line. If you watch the game and check the outcome, your guys won that battle, I think. I, I, I agree. Uh, the, the unfortunate thing is, you know, you don't win the statistical battle, you win the football game, and, and we, we, we did. We played awfully well on both fronts. And, you know, again, some little mistakes that cost us, and uh, against a good football team, you can't afford to do that. Now, there were plays from the beginning. We showed that, that opening kickoff by Diasme St. Just. As the game went along, you started to get a sense, wait, one team's ranked 25, one team's off of one in 11 season, and the guys who were the underdogs are taking it to them. Well, you know, we, 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 again, if we had gone up two scores, or if we had done a couple of things differently, or we may have, you know, buried them a little bit, maybe got their, got their psyche a little short, but, but it's a good football team with a good football program and a good head coach and a good coaching staff. So you knew it was going to take an all-out effort and, you know, error-free kind of football. Now, we see a lot of the positive plays going on both on offense and defense, and your guys went after it. That's Kennedy Tuli Masseli of the defensive front. Let's talk offense first as we start to break this down. Your quarterback, redshirt sophomore, Ekeko Woolsey. Your impressions of his first start and finish in one game. Well, he, you know, we talked all week about managing the game, and I thought he did a terrific job of that. No turnovers. Uh, we wanted him to step up into the pocket. He came out a couple of times, maybe a little too soon, but he managed it perfectly, and he did what he had to do. Um, like I say, no turnovers is big for us, so he's going to be a heck of a quarterback. He really is. He, he, it means something to him. It's important to him. Now, what he was looking for, what you were looking for in him, was the game experience. Did he show maturity? Can he be a leader? Can he run the offense? His teammates' reactions to him, pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. It's terrific. Um, yeah, and all, yes to all of the above. He did it. Uh, he will continue to do it. He has a very, very bright future. Now, before we take a look at Ikaiko's statistics against Washington, let's hear from Hawaii quarterback Ikaiko Wuzi. First time you finished what you started, an entire football game. How's the body feel? How's the mind feel? Um, my body feels good, you know, uh, 
I definitely feel good. You know, you know, of course I'm gonna get hit. You know, it's football, but that's something you know you just gotta deal with. You know, because everyone, everyone on our team is getting hit. You know, big hits. But uh, you know, it definitely comes in the off season, just putting that work in. You know, just getting you know physically prepared and also mentally prepared. You know, my mind felt. You know, I feel good. You know, I wanted that one last drive, but you know, we obviously came up short. So that's just you know, it is what it is. We just gotta deal with it and move on to next week. I was talking to coach before you came out. Says you, no doubt, earned his respect by the way you played today. That's got to feel good. Oh, yeah, obviously, you know, it definitely feels good, you know, when the head man says stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I don't want to earn his respect. I want to earn my teammates' respect, you know, because they're out there working just as hard as me. You know, just because I play quarterback doesn't mean I'm better than anyone because I'm not, you know. I'm the type of guy that it's about the team. It's always about the, it's always about the team, and, you know, and, and it won't ever change. Go Wolves, these numbers, 23 of 42, 207 yards. Add to that 34 yards on the ground, 6'1", 200 pounds from the Bay Area. Started getting it going, Coach, on the first drive. 10 plays, 58 yards, 328, resulting in that one-yard touchdown. That opening drive is like they had no idea what hit them. You guys marched down the field. That had to get you guys jacked up. Yeah, it is. It was so important, you know, Getting that first drive, set up the tempo, not only the game, but, um, you know, for the offense. That opening drive, I felt like the world couldn't even stop us. You know, I was so excited, you know, and uh, I was so confident that that first drive, we were going to play like that. You know, coming into a game, you know, I come in with the, with, with, in, with a full confidence that my offense can get it done. And that's something that we did, you know, guns blazing. And, uh, you know, it felt good to get that, you know, that first drive in. Guns blazing. Coach, mm -hmm. that first drive probably couldn't have worked out more perfect what you had on paper came to life on the football field. It did. You know, Jordan and the rest of the offensive coaches, we always script the first 12 plays. So the, the, they were going in order. Oftentimes, you know, you have to make adjustments on a third down call. But it went well, and, and it gave us some life. And, and But the, that gummit robbery was that second one that we should have had. <laughs> now, as you start to look at the way the offense played out, we heard from your quarterback, and we got what was expected from your running back and Joey Yosefa. Make no mistake about it, number seven is a stunt. He really is, and, and we wanted to limit his carries to a little less than 30, but he got 30 of them, and he's, he's always on the sidelines asking me for the ball. <clears throat> so he is, he's, you know, we need to keep him healthy. He's a, not only a good running back, but he's a good leader, and uh, his enthusiasm is, is infectious, really. Yeah, he had a 22-yard run late in the game that put you in some great field position. Joey's numbers, you mentioned the 30 carries. He had totaled for uh, 143 yards on the ground. The big thing, zero negative runs from a guy at Division I college football playing running back. His fifth 100-yard game of his career, fourth in his last five games. Why is it you look fresh? Like you can play some more right now. <laughs> Yeah, I think like, you know, the work that we've been doing in the off season, you know, I think we did a great job, you know. You know, I believe myself that our model for this year was finished and it come down fourth, fourth quarter and we see who finish, you know. We still um, didn't get that dub, but I feel like, you know, if you have that um, one more shot in the last drive, I feel like we, we, we got them done because, you know, all the guys were excited, not excited and was wait for another turn because, you know, we have so much confidence in ourselves, our own line quarterback receiver that we didn't get it done. So now it's five players last night against Washington. They made their first Division I collegiate starts. I don't know if you looked at the, the rosters both sides. In a way, young, in a way, guys got experience last year. Is the light now on at the end of the tunnel? Can you see it? Can the program see it? Well, I hope so, Robert. I, I, you know, we play another tough opponent next week. I think this opponent next week will probably be better than the one we just played. I'm not sure about all that. We'll have to continue to look at some tapes. But I, I hope so. And I think I, I, the, the, the step in the right direction is the belief system that these young people have. You know, the Joeys and the Cody's and the Moses that you just visit with and Bo Yap, they're now seniors. And with senior leadership, you always have a chance. Now, this is not all on you, but for the U.S. football program, it's nine of the last ten nationally ranked teams that they face. They've lost at 16 consecutive losses on national television for the University of Hawaii football program. Much more to talk about when we come back. This is Norm Chow, Inside Access, here at OC Sports.
Is it safe to assume this is one of those games that coulda, woulda, shoulda, that close? Uh, we don't really go on that shoulda, coulda. We know that uh, go by the X's and O's, and if we executed more, maybe the outcome would have been different. I think in the fourth quarter, we just, like Coach said earlier uh, in the locker room, we, uh, we got to be a little bit more disciplined. Welcome back to Norm Chow, Inside Access here at OC Sports. Defense, you force Washington to punt on eight of their first nine possessions in the second half. There's not much more you could probably ask from a defense. No, no. Uh, again, uh, you know, you have to pay, play error-free football. We made a couple of mistakes, but yes, I thought our defense played awfully well. I think they were, what, five in the third quarter or, or four or five in the third quarter. One, they made a 15-yard gain, and we had them three and out after that. So um, our defense played terrific. It's a real credit to Kevin and to Kurt and Lewis and, and uh, Durante. Our defensive staff does a terrific job getting our guys ready. Uh, in the mix on defense <clears throat> for Hawaii at safety, the guy who had 10 tackles last night, Tess Stevenson, who graduated from Washington, made it on the high school product, comes back and lines up against his former team, and he brought it. He really did. I had to calm him down because he was celebrating. He was having a good old time. He has been a terrific addition to our team, and, and uh, uh, not only the play, but the leadership and the, and the maturity that he brings to us is terrific. And here we see a Taz making one of his 10 tackles it's all over the place, and he's one of the guys, one of the five that got their first Division One start for the University of Hawaii. Now, Simon Pulte, at linebacker 37, came up with a clutch sack late in the fourth. He had five tackles as well. Your impressions on the linebacker? Well, Simon, we, 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 we're really happy. With him. He's an old-fashioned, downhill type of linebacker that enjoys playing the game as well. And along with Julian and, and Tavita, gives us three good inside linebackers. We can rotate a little bit. They can rest up a little bit. Uh, couldn't be more pleased with Simon Pulte. Now, what Hawaii's defense did to Washington quarterback Jeff Lundquist, as we check his numbers, in a passing game, not very productive. 10 for 26, 162 yards, did hit Hawaii with a monster touchdown. And that touchdown is a guy who scored twice in the first half. We're talking John Rush. Before he catches a 91-yard touchdown, he's got a 20-yard touchdown in the second quarter off a of reverse. He, uh, and he's probably a 4-3 guy, 4-2-9 guy. But um, he, again, he played awfully well. It, it's, it's called a four-beater. The pass that they, they threw uh, to him beat, up, beat our coverage, and he obviously outran everybody. Yeah, we saw the Naquan Phillips play before that. That set up a reverse that got them into a touchdown. That's John Ross again. Again, the quarterback, Lindquist, hits Ross for a home run play. And the guy just had too much speed. Nobody could catch him. That's yeah. 91 yards. That's 91. But you take those 91 yards away, and we play good, good yeah. pass defense. Now, you had given the green light early on here when you hired Kevin Clune as your defensive coordinator. A lot of times, first of all, I'm shocked because you're an offensive guy. A lot of offensive coaches don't want to give that green light because it puts you in some tough situations when you play field position. I talked to him afterwards. He said he'd guesstimate maybe 45%. He blitzed. Is that the number you're looking for as well? Well, I, I told him he could get after every single down if he wanted to. As an offensive coach, I understand how difficult it is to pick up the blitzes. Kevin does an outstanding job. He's really dedicated to, dedicated to his craft. He works at it. His staff works at it. And we're awfully pleased with what he did last night. And hopefully, obviously, it can continue. Hey, it's just one game of the 2014 tough schedule. But looks like defense is back at UH. I was very happy with uh, with the physical plays. Very happy with how hard they played. Their effort was was there. Their effort is a is a winning a winning effort. But little things uh, we got on the other side of that coin. We got to play smarter. There's about three four plays that we need to play smarter. You know, there was the uh, two third down penalties. There was a reverse play. We should have had a guy standing on top of that. Um, little things. Little things that we can get better. You know, from week to week, and, and uh, that was the in a tight ball game like that. Those little tiny things are the ones that matter. You guys get hit for the 91 yarder, but your guys didn't crumble. They could have easily cracked. You guys stood up and got mad about it. Yeah. And again, credit to the defenses. They kept fighting. Um, and that's a tough thing. And a corner, you know, sometimes a corner is like a, a, a major league pitcher. He might give up a home run. He's going to come back with his best fastball in the next play. And so D fought back. The, the DBs fought back. Um, the, the D line got slowly got stronger as the game went on. 
Um, so there's a lot of good things there. Just uh, got to tweak that mental thing. Got to make huge gains in between game one and two. Like everybody was saying, they're a top 25 team, and uh, it looked like we was uh, holding our own against them. But uh, I'm sure when we go look at the film, uh, a little mistakes here we, that if we fix, maybe the outcome would have been different. Um, and I know I'm just happy that uh, we worked hard and um, that uh, hopefully next week we come back with a W. We're going to continue to get tougher and stronger. We're going to continue to dominate. You know, we're going to try and dominate those those uh, line of scrimmages. Uh, and, I, and I'm very happy with this effort. But next week we're going to come back better. Uh, every coach handles a loss differently. Kevin Clune strikes me as a guy who gets very ticked off. <laughs> was he? He was. He's. Uh, he, every time I, I, I would go and say, keep going, good job. We go, ah, we got to get better. We got to get better. We got to. But that's the competitive nature of Kevin. And, the, and like I say, the rest of the staff as well. Uh, uh, I talked to Kurt a little bit this morning, talked to Lou after the game last night. But Kevin leads them and, and he's in, in meetings with them. And, and uh, like I said, I, I'm really pleased with so far what we've done. Much more to talk about. We'll talk opportunity. We'll talk special teams when Norm Chow, Inside Access, returns here at OC Sports. Norm Chow, he knows what a missed opportunity that was, especially because Washington gets this ball back to start the second half. Made it from 28. This one from 40. Just misses. Welcome back to Norm Chow Inside Access here in OC Sports. 99 times out of 100, a kicker hits the upright. You get a deflection, it goes through. <laughs> we hit it so perfectly dead center that Tyler had his ball and strict up. Yeah, well, it could have been. Um, <clears throat> you know, at the time when it happened and when we missed that touchdown opportunity, you knew that it was going to come back to haunt us um, because we were playing such a good football team. But, uh, golly, had we made that, you know, obviously we, we, we would be talking a whole different story. Yeah, but Tyler Haddon did connect on three field goals, 28 yards, 38 yards, 27 yards, and what may have gone unnoticed is kickoffs, 64.4 yard average. That's impressive. Yeah, it really is. I was I was just going to say that he was three for four, 75 percent, and and the kickoffs were very were done very well. We're real pleased with Tyler. He it, it's important to him. It means so much to him, and we're just awfully glad to have him. Now let's continue to talk on special teams. Let's take a look at Scott. Harding and what he brings to this football team. Last season's most valuable player of this team to get some run as slot back, but his biggest value may be as a punter. He punted last night and he went off the chain. This kid's incredible. And, and it's left footed too. He kicked it left footed, not right footed, which he normally is, but he left footed. And the other thing that, that uh, we need to remember is that he's also our most surefire, dependable punt return. Now, he got one punt off that traveled 58 yards. They used him as a punt returner going backwards and still making the successful grab. And this poor kid gets hit. Because he's part of his rugby style kick. The longer he holds it, the more opportunities. And he almost got one back off one of his weird yeah. rugby style bounces. And you saw, I mean, what you showed one right footer, one left foot. I don't think it makes no yeah. never mind to him. That, that's crazy stuff. And throughout it all, there were opportunities. There were chances. Now let's take a look early on that second drive that you talked about. There was an opportunity. It's fourth and two from the nine. And you call the reverse pass, Marcus Kent. Let me say this. The play was wide open. You had the opportunity. That's what you wish for. That's what you hope for. When you play a good team like that, you obviously need to take some chances. You, you know, you're not going to get many. You just need to take it and, and, and keep working at it. So was that predetermined? Were you going to go for it no matter what? You were just, we had them on the ropes. We have an opportunity here. Well, we did call a timeout and, th and thought about it. But uh, again, after after the timeout, you, you you know, during the timeout, you realize, hey, we're going to have to go do some things different against these people because they have such a good football team. And then the one we saw again, I'm sick of seeing it, it's 91 yards, uh, a home run play by Washington, which followed up 
a personal foul on defense that gave them the opportunity. Well, again, errors, uh, uh, penalties. We had five of them, Robert, and and I'm, we're always preaching, you can't have penalties that do not affect a play. And all five of the penalties that we had did not have any direct effect on the play, and and and, and it hurt us. And they got us in the right coverage. We call it cover four. That's a cover four beater, and it got us. Final numbers: Hawaii versus the University of Washington, the 25th ranked team in the country. Rainbow Warriors with more first down, more yards of total offense, 424 to 336. Washington had three sacks compared to one for the University of Hawaii. And UH won the time of possession battle, 34 minutes, 11 seconds to 25 minutes and 49 seconds. Much more to come. This is Don Chow, Inside Access here in OC Sports. Welcome back to Norm Chow, Inside Access here on OC Sports. We're joined now in studio by Stephen Sy from the Star Advertiser, host of the Warrior Beat. Let me ask you, physically dominating, offensive line, defensive line, who's more impressive right now? Well, we always thought the defensive line was going to be good because we saw how good they were in um, the training camp and everything. But the offensive line had a great game last night, and they just played really well. And, uh, you know, Ben Clark just dominated over there. Yeah, and I don't think announcers are – Statistics showed how Ole Kikaha doing too much damage, and thank you Ben Clark, thank you Shigematsu on the other side. Right, because even the, even the stack stack the stack stack was given up was um, you know because of a missed block by the you know, yeah. guy in the backfield, and so Ben Clark really held his arm, and that's that's good because he's playing a guy who's got a high motor and a lot of great moves. Ikeka Wolsey, quarterback, your impressions? I just thought he was really good. He felt really comfortable in there. I was just amazed how long he could stand in that pocket because that's that's hard for him that goes against his nature he wants to run movies you know he's like a shark right sharks got to move where they die and you know he was he just held in there and he looked really good kevin clune a lot was said when he was first hired maybe it wasn't the name popular to many people who follow the game of football Oh, it's looking good right now, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and he, he blitzed, and he would have blitzed some more. If, you know, <laughs> let him, he just had to restrain himself a little bit. But, you know, he really put a lot of pressure, and that's how it was. You know, the previous two years, they had all these packages. They did those things in, in practices, but they never really brought it out in games. They didn't transfer over. This game, what you saw in practices is what you saw in the games, and it looks like that they're now really extending what they do. 55, nose guard, Washington Husky, Shelton. There's a special relationship between he and Coach Chow, right? Right. It, he, uh, yeah, he, he got Tanya Harding there. What he, what he did <laughs> is, um, I guess it was a UCLA camp several years ago. Um, uh, Coach Chow was an uh, offensive coordinator at UCLA, and Shelton picked up a guy, tossed him, and kind of rolled him into uh, Chow, and Chow ended up with a fractured leg. And fractured, fractured knee. He got kneecapped. Fractured knee. He got kneecapped. He did. Thus, the Tanya Harding reference. This week, I'm told for size matters, you went back to school a little bit. Yes, or we somebody did. went back to school. Yes, we did. And you remember days back when, you know, how school, the first day, you got to buy all your different things and meet all the different young people and new people. Because before game one, there was fall camp. After fall camp, members of the UH football team, like the rest of the student body, went back to school at UH. For the first day of school, what did you buy? Some clothes, some shoes. What kind of clothes? Shoes. I bought some. Jordans, some V-neck, so. Are V-necks back? Yeah. I was just dressed up, but then I got over here and realized that you don't really need to be all dressed up and flashy and stuff. <laughs> you can just wear shorts and whatever. I'm over it now. This is my super senior year, fifth year. Uh, I'm just wearing whatever I, whatever I find when it's dark in the morning, whatever shirt is on the top, that's what I'm wearing. I'm not uh, getting dressed up for anything anymore. I didn't buy anything. I just used uh, our pens and pencils from uh, our notebooks from summer camp, <laughs> our training camp, you know. We get, we get a little pencil book and then uh, I don't know, I just use that. I use the same notebook for like four years. I like to be organized. I mean, I got myself a new binder, little dividers like I did back in high school. Uh, just a new set of pens that I probably get one set once a month because I keep losing them. I uh, bought some pencils. Uh, and then I. Uh, Composition books, but some Skittles. <laughs> Skittles is that a Skittles. Lynch thing? Yeah, Skittles is uh, key. Nothing. I didn't buy anything. I would just take a no notebook to my one class and yeah, there. <laughs> What's the best advice you would give to a freshman coming to you? Me to a freshman. Uh, 
Don't sit on your phone in class. It can be a big distraction. Uh, that's what I tell the freshmen here. It's a huge distraction. You don't pay attention in class. I've gotten a poor grade because of that, because I wasn't paying attention like I should have. Wait, were you the one who sat on your phone? Yeah, I was the one, yeah. Go to class early so you can walk and you can get there without having the armpit sweat. Um, don't wear pants. Don't let the fool around your freshman year and ruin your GPA. Is that what happened to you, or? I mean, I was... I didn't mess up, but I mean, it could have been better. Be nice to the teacher, get your work done, and play play football. Go up to Captain Center, draw around lunchtime, that's when all the girls show up. But I know who do ask the dumb questions. It has to be between Jalen and Jarrell Jackson. <laughs> Jalen Rogers and Jarrell Jackson. <laughs> Why is that? Because they just off the top of like, they ask anything, random stuff. Give me an example. Jalen doesn't believe that the dinosaurs existed. <laughs> like he really, he, he deep in his heart doesn't believe that they exist, even though fossils have been found. He, he That's just what he believes in wholeheartedly. So he never watched the Flintstones? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I guess not. I mean, I guess he did and he, I mean, that's fake. Like he needs proof. And since we can't give him proof, that means it didn't happen. Speaking of proof. See you at lunch tomorrow, Campus Center, 1230. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit old to be doing that. <laughs> okay, you might be seeing me around the Senior Center. <laughs> Flashback. Age yourself. What's the first thing you bought when you went back to school every year? I don't know, but what is this composition book? Is it like third grade? And What's a pencil? Who uses pencils no, anymore? Peachy folder. <laughs> Did Dave Lay Folter really have the same notebook for four years to go to every class? I don't know, but at least he wasn't sitting on his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Sai from the Star Advertiser, host of The War We Beat. Thank you for joining us again this week. Be back with more Norm Chow, Inside Access, here at OC Sports. So maybe in a perfect world, they finish and win by one, not lose by one. But you sent the message. It was that close to being delivered, wasn't it? It really was. And, and you just have to give these young people credit. You really do. That Their effort was there, and, you know, that, which is all you can ever ask. You know, there's a long season ahead. Uh, we play another tough opponent this Saturday. But I, 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 I know the players want to. They, they, the effort is there. We're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. One injury of note to talk about. Mm -hmm. In that first quarter, you lose your starting center and a captain in Cody Afosia. What's the update on the right hand? Well, I just saw him a few minutes ago, and uh, uh, <clears throat> they're going to take him in. Tomorrow's a holiday, so it would be a little tough for getting him in to see a specialist. I think he's going to be fine. He, I told him you can always snap the ball with your left hand, and, and he's <laughs> such a competitive guy that he probably will do that. Now, replacing him, <laughs> what a week for Brandon Urban. He's a walk-on who his family could not afford for him to come back from Colorado to pay his own tuition and play football again. You bring him back. He goes on scholarship, and in eight days' time, he's taking snaps from one of the best nose guards in college football yeah. in Shelton. That's a good week. That's a great week. It tells you how much camp is overrated, Robert. <laughs> he's like a professional. He yeah. didn't want to go to camp. That's right. He was holding out. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but here's what the takeaway is for public sentiment, public perception, and what the Hawaii football team did against Washington. I want you to see this. This is at halftime. Your football team is heading into the locker room against the Huskies. Listen to the crowd. There is appreciation. There is a, a sense of go get them. We're behind you. You feel the tide in public perception, the tide in how your football program is looked at is changing? Are you sensing it? Well, you know, I, I obviously don't spend too much time with it, but people like yourself tell me that, and I'm proud of that. I, 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 want our, I want the public to feel good about their football team. 
This is the only university in the, in the state of Hawaii, and, and they need your, the, the support of the fans. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, again, I don't spend much time because of the, you know, so much is involved with football, but I'm glad to hear what you just had to say because it's important to our players. It, it caught my attention when your team was going into that tunnel. And I looked around, and I saw everybody standing, and you could hear the applause, and you could hear the good feeling, the good messages that were being sent. That's Good terrific. Stuff. That's, that, that, that's, that is great stuff because I, I told them at halftime we had them right where we wanted them. We had them right there and, and we just didn't finish again. But uh, again, it, 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 it lends well to what lies ahead. Although, again, the schedule is very difficult. I think our players understand that and believe that we can get it done. Now, here is what is lying ahead. Hawaii loses to Washington 17-16. Look what's next. Oregon State. <laughs> Northern Iowa, who almost did it again almost beat in college Iowa, football. Yeah. Then you get on the road to Colorado, on the road to Houston to take on Rice. Conference schedule starts October 11th in Wyoming, then it's at San Diego State, and this schedule does not get much easier. Nevada, Utah State, Colorado State will beat Colorado, San Diego State, UNLV, and you wrap up the season on the road against defending division champions <laughs> in Fresno State. Next week, Oregon State, what do you know? Well, we, I know they're very well coached. Um, they like to throw the ball around. They have a, a pro prospect at quarterback that's been quarterbacking them for the last two years. They don't play a lot of different things on defense, but what they do do on defense, they do awfully well, Robert. And, you know, we're going to have to defend the pass with Sean Mannion. He's legitimate. He's legitimate. I'll tell you that. He is. He's probably with Marcus Mariota, two of the top five quarterbacks uh, getting ready for the pro draft. Coach, good luck next week against the Beavers. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Robert. For Norm Chow, for our entire OC Sports crew, I'm Robert Kikawla. Thanks for watching. Norm Chow, Inside Access, here in OC Sports.